This is in my humble opinion. Uh, we're getting ready to start the business segment that we have. This segment is being brought to you by Coach B. Um, he does specializing in training with sp sports training, conditioning. You can reach him in Orange County, Virginia at 101F Berry Hill Road, Orange County, Virginia, 22960. That being said, we have... We have an extension of what, in my humble opinion, has been trying to do, and that is better our community. What we have brought to you today is the ability to work on your credit, fix your credit, buy homes, um, a multitude of different things that these next two people that's coming on. I don't even want to describe. I don't even want to read their business off to you because they're family at this point. The conversation that I've had with them had me so excited for what they're bringing to the Charlottesville area that they will actually change the dynamic here. Mm, preach, okay? Preach. So, without further ado, I'm going to let y'all introduce your own name and your business. Well... Well, hello. Yes, Meet the entrepreneur Afwa Jones, mm. who has mastered the credit repair industry and disrupted it in order to make a way for our community to build generational wealth. I help people repair their own credit and start their own credit repair business. Credit repair is part of our financial power, and it's a way of getting uh, the things that we want and need. The credit industry is worth $2.8 billion, and uh, it's more than just a business for me. It's a chance to build uh, wealth together in this industry um, that we've already been contributing to before we even understood its value. So I'm super excited to be here, super excited to talk financial literacy, to share everything that I know as a board-certified credit consultant who was a previous credit reporter from Equifax. Uh -oh. Share everything that I have with you guys so that we can go get the things that are ordained for us to have. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got a hard woman to follow right oh, there. Yes, I do. Well, uh, my name is Curtis White. I'm with Direct Mortgage Brokers. Um, as a broker, I provide more mortgage products, better rates uh, through more lenders and banks. Uh, so I'm here to give you information on once you get your credit fixed or how to fix your credit and, and get you into a home if that's what you would like to do. Okay, now that, that being said, what do you find to be the greatest challenge when coming into a new area? Either one of you. Like when y'all are trying to, y'all, okay, let's be transparent for a second. Curtis, you've tried to go out and actually recruit different people in the area. You right. set up facilities for them to come to for free. Right. You've uh, brought food, you've done a, a multitude of different things. But you haven't got the response from the people that you've been looking for. Sometimes people just don't want to take advantage. They don't think they can either qualify or think they have the funds to do it. But there's so many programs out there. There's grant money, um, some 100% financing still left. There's so many programs that can get you in a house if that's, that's what you want to do. And people just scared. They don't think that they qualify. Now, before I get to the house part, Afro, I, you know, I can feel your energy coming all the way through the airwaves. And I know you got something to tell me. So when it comes to that point, where you say, okay, I, I'm not at a point I can get a house. You know, I'm I'm hard enough getting my credit straight so I can rent somewhere. What what is the first steps that you think people need to take? Well, I want to give it back to Curtis because he said something so pivotal, which is people are afraid. And the one thing that I always say when I start my consultation with people is you cannot conquer what you don't confront. Mm. And so speaking on the terms of fear, people are afraid of what they don't know. Like, for instance, the process um, for becoming a homeowner, you just need to have uh, and you can correct this two years of bank statements, two years years of tax, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's a really quick checklist. But going back to your credit, um, the Fair Credit Reporting Act um, is really, I, I teach my clients how to leverage uh, that law um, so that you can, we can, we'll know where we're starting from and then we can get you there. But you have to know where you start from. And then when you talked, to, when you talked about what would be the first thing, mm -hmm. the first thing that I would tell people, and this is a pro tip number one, if anybody's taking notice, hey. um, a lot of folks don't understand that just updating your personal information on your credit report will increase your score alone. We haven't even gotten into addressing any credit. Just updating your personal information alone across all three bureaus will increase your credit score. The three credit Explain bureaus... That. Uh, explain that a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. The three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, are business entities. They are not owned by government. They just report on our bad debt. 
So it's okay to contact them. And what I mean by that is if you have an outdated or incorrect or wrong address, employer or um old address employer uh, um, or, or any any of your information if you ever see your name running together we call it alias uh, running together on a credit report that's inaccurate you can get that off and once you get all of that the old employers off the old uh, addresses off the incorrect names that alone can boost your score I've seen it go as high as 30 points just that so I always start with that let's correct your personal information um, and now we're communicating with the bureaus we're not arguing with them we're coming at them real hey this is incorrect and now you're starting a dialogue where you can begin to get your credit repaired why do i want to straighten my credit because credit is power you know credit is power you can you can do a lot more with credit than you can with cash because with credit let's just take maybe business credit for instance i'll tell you the difference between personal and business credit Pro tip number two. So the difference between <laughs> personal credit and business credit is that once you establish your business credit, when you get um, when you get approved for business credit, now you're talking about fifty thousand dollars versus ten thousand or a five hundred dollar secured credit card or a two hundred and fifty dollar secured credit card. And now once you've established business credit, guess how much business loans go for? You can get business loans up to two hundred and fifty million. You always want to be using other people's money. So you want to get your business credit straight if you're serious about looking into entrepreneurship. You want to get your your I mean your personal credit straight if you're serious about you know going that way. So it's just imperative because even jobs insurance everybody is looking at your credit profile to see to, to gauge your credit worthiness mm. hey guys Aaron and this is an interesting interview because uh, I'm a loan officer uh, I've been a loan officer for 18 years and um, when I was listening to you guys I want both of you guys and I think you'll probably agree with me what the thing that I run into with a lot of clients and, and I've helped clients with credit repair from throughout my whole career but one of the things that really annoys me, and I like to use the word annoy, so many people starting off behind already and not being prepared and just, you know, let me let me be real transparent. The thing that bothers me the most, I have people coming to my office mm -hmm. that are 57 years old and they have bad credit. Mm. You know, they've, what had, they, they've had bad credit for 25 years. And no one has even helped them correct it. But then what I find out is when I talk to their kids, yeah. I talk to the grandbabies, guess what they all have? Bad credit too. Yeah. And so I want to start to try to talk about a little bit of preventative maintenance. Uh -huh. Like for example, with my children, they're piggybacking on some of my credit that I have now that's reporting positively. So they don't have to start off on that. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because I, I want to get people to start, you know, especially people that have young Teenagers, young, not even teenagers, 10, 11, 12 years old, but people in college, mm -hmm. the, the different things that they can start and the good decisions they can start making so when they get out of school, they have good credit and that we're already starting off on a good financial platform. Let me piggyback off of what you're saying real quick, Aaron. One, one of the groups that I target is the african-american male that comes home from prison absolutely now the first thing that they want to do is run to these buy here pay here places with the high interest and get a 1976 mercedes <laughs> you know what i'm saying the, and then, when the charity already went out right, right. And, and then on top <laughs> and on top of that you you're riding around and when you take it to go get fixed they're gonna charge you like it's a mercedes they yeah. don't care what year it is yeah. so they don't realize, okay, I got locked up at 17, 18. I have no credit. I'm just like a college student coming out. Yeah. You know, so stop putting yourself in these predicaments that cause you to have terrible credit off the bat. Stop taking everybody out to the club. <laughs> and buying up the bar and trying to find them a girl. Where's the organ? Of, we got the organ ready. Yeah, yeah, you know, ready. Yeah, what what it's, an organ? <laughs> instead of taking them to the bank and getting them a bank account and showing them how to wow. use that bank account. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know the preach, preach. Well, I do find uh, with a lot of my clients, like you were saying, Aaron, it is a hand holding process. You just got to take your time with them. You know, and, and if you're taking clients regardless of the age from beginning to end you want to make sure that they understand the process and what they're doing yeah, so it, it's important for me to let my clients know everything about their process as well as I know it or even better because they're going to be in that loan uh, from next 10, 20, 30 years so I want them to know even even better than I do 
And when they're signing something, they need to know exactly what it is. But here, but but let me check. I want to make sure that that what I communicated was properly. When I say that I was annoyed. I'm annoyed that we waited this I know you have to start somewhere. Yeah, I'm annoyed we're waiting this long to address this problem because you and I know that, you know, age is undefeated. Oh yeah. And something that you can start when you're thirty five or twenty five is a lot easier to manage than when you're fifty seven or sixty seven years old. And it's just it's just a time and it's just I want our people to just start to try to figure things out early. We're we we we're in a community where we just learn things so late. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that we're doing the education. And I'm glad that we're doing all of this, but at the same token, we've got to catch up quicker. And Aaron, while we do have to catch up, what I will say is, you know, we have to start again. I like I said, we can't conquer where we, what we don't come from. We have to start where we're at. And what what I mean by that is, our community, we haven't had. Uh, a blanket path made for us yes Mm. we've had some but you know if we go back to that we haven't had an example laid out for us as regularly like we don't have generational wealth so for a lot of us we are the beginning of our generational wealth so that's okay we start where we're at now we're talking about what would you be able to do what I would say is do what my mama did so what my Mm -hmm. mama did was she opened up a bank account for me in 1983 when I I was 10 years old and I with Navy Federal Credit Union and I still maintain that. So now I've got well over a 20, 30, 40 year relationship with the bank. Absolutely. You know, yeah. once I hey, started at 10, by the time they're 20, they've already had a 10 year relationship with the right. bank. That's very easy to do, That's especially right. if you bank if your job has like a credit union or something like that. And then let me tell you what my mom did. Now, granted, we don't write checks anymore. However, at that time, what my mom did was take me to member services and and let them show me the proper way to write a check and how to balance it. She let them do their job. So that's a very easy, easy thing to do. And you can get a lesson too, mom and dad, grandma, Medea, if you don't know yourself. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But this is how we can all, you know, get this together. Yeah, but thank y'all, thank y'all. I mean, this this is a great start to a much needed conversation, and I love the energy, love the energy, y'all. Um, but how about this? I want we take a quick break, and then um, you know some of the questions, some real life situations that our listeners have, we'll dig a little deeper in, into those when we come right back. How about that? Yes, awesome. Right. Yeah. Y'all stay tuned. We're with Direct Mortgage Brokers. Calls Razor A A Ron in the booth in the building with our friends from Direct Mortgage Brokers. Thank y'all, thank y'all. And, um, and we, we were having a very, very fruitful um, and, and, and energetic, informative, most of all, um, discussion of, you know, regarding everything, like when it comes to just the finances behind, you know, I'm like having it in order, you know, and, and everything that that may mean, the spectrum of that definition, you know, taxes, credit, right? The whole uh, kit and caboodle. You know, the whole so kit and caboodle, you know, it goes on and on. So... So here's one thing um, that I want us to talk on because the experts are here. So you got to take advantage of this brain power. Um, there's a there's there's a question about uh, like when it comes to the right time and knowing when to leverage what type of residence. Meaning, should one look to rent while they're building their credit? Is a mortgage something that you should jump into because the ends justifies the means? What's the advice that you give there? So, yeah, awesome. If you do choose to rent while you want to build your credit, you can use your rent to build your credit. So you can actually have your good rental history put on your credit report, creating a new primary line, which a primary line of credit is a line of credit established in your name that does not fall off. And every line that you add, it will boost your score anywhere from 20 to 50 points. Mm. So one thing people have to remember is when it comes to um, restoring your credit, you never want to build while you have bad credit because all you're going to be doing is seesawing your credit. So you clean first, then you build. Um, Mm. But if you Mm. need to rent, you could also be getting credit for renting. Mm. Hey, say that again, though. You said clean first, clean the credit first, then you build the credit. Yes, that is the correct way. I want to make sure that sinks in. Clean, then build. And so um, with that being said, if you guys want me to explain where I would really start with everybody is helping them understand the Fair Credit Reporting Act. 
Sure, sure. Go okay, ahead. so I'm not going to read the Fair Credit Reporting Act because I know your audience is intelligent and they can mm-hmm. look that up and read it for themselves. But what I will do is summarize it. So what the Fair Credit Reporting Act says is that you and I, consumers, we have a right to dispute any debt. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that we don't owe the debt. Mm-hmm. It means we have a right to dispute the debt. And when we dispute the debt for accuracy, the bureaus have 30 to 45 days to verify that we, in fact, owe that debt. Mm. If they don't do that in that time frame, it needs to be removed off of your credit report. Again, it doesn't mean that you don't owe it. It just means that now you have you are leveraging the law to get it removed off of your credit report. And that is one way to increase your credit score. Got you, got you. Right, right. You know, in, in saying that, something that comes to mind is that there's, because you, you mentioned it uh, earlier about um, that we, a lot of times, like we just don't have that, that history, that tradition of finance being a part of the dinner table discussion, right? And, and so w- one of the things that I found, y'all, is that like there's so many simple things that we overlook, like that goes towards your financial stability. You know, it, it's, it's like simple things, what, like from the type of insurance that, that you pick. You know, to make sure that there's cash value, you know, oh, things, things like that. You know, there's there's just so many little things that where this conversation mm-hmm. is so important because we, you know, we, we as a people make making this the norm of our barbershop talk mm-hmm. is, is I feel is so crucial. Um, so to follow up on, on what you were just saying as well, um, uh, so credit looks good, you know, above average, I'd say, and I'm not talking about myself. This this sort of a rhetorical statement. So you so you're there, and then. People, you know, is it good to be able to then start compounding on to what you owe? Like, like, talk about the good debt versus the bad debt. You know, like multiple mortgages and so on and so forth. Okay, so, um, well, you know, yeah, those that's great, obviously, like you said, for building your real estate portfolio, mm-hmm. um, but and also in building your credit. Um, so. You want to be systematic about how you do things. So whenever you add a line and you get that boost that I was telling you about, if you add three lines at one time, it's still just going to be that one boost. So you really want to do things. Like I said, you want to clean it first. You add a line, wait the three weeks for it to report, see where you're at, where it boosts, see where your uh, utilization, your credit utilization is at. As you know, Curtis uh, and Aaron being uh, loan officers that you want to see your clients 30 percent or less. Uh, So one way to tackle that is if you have a a, a credit line of credit and you are over that line, you want to at least bring it under that that line so that now your utilization comes down some. Another way uh, to in, a little trick that I use with folks to help increase your credit score and that doesn't cost you any additional money um, is, you know, your credit is based off of a couple of different factors and payment history and number of payments is one of them. So mm-hmm. let's say you have a bill due on a 10th of each month for 20 bucks. Then what I would do is on the first, I would pay $10 and on the 5th, I would pay another $10. So you've paid your $20 before the due date, but you also just got credit for two payments, not one. Mm. So when you have more payments, that's another way, a little, you know, way to kind of trip yeah. the system, if you will, to increase. That's another way to build your credit. So you can start with there's a there is a solution for wherever you're at. Yeah. Again, you can't conquer what you don't confront. So if we look at where you're at, we the experts will help you get to where you need to be. We just need to start the dialogue and let us, you know, begin to, to get things going. You said there's a solution for everything. What about when you get <laughs> I got something for you. Come on, come on. Uh, no, don't say come on. Don't say that. Um, <laughs> now, this is a very real thing in the African-American community. Not all of us, you said it earlier, um, Aaron said it earlier, not all of us have spouses and family members that know about credit. So when two people get married and one person isn't as strong with credit or making credit decisions as the other one, how do you combat that? Well, one thing that... that uh, you definitely want to be looking at as you combine your expenses you want to be looking at what the combined uh, income is and what the combined expenses are going to be and see where uh, maybe both of you guys have internet services maybe both of you guys have two different um, uh, 
phone carriers. So you find ways to consolidate that makes sense mm-hmm. for your needs. So that's that's definitely um, one way to do it. I know for um, 21 years of marriage, hey. um, but to my high school sweetheart, hey baby. Um, so uh, so you know in the beginning, one of the things you know I, you know I was I was a little bit spoiled being the only daughter of my mom and all that kind of little stuff, and I had to have my way. And so one of the things that we needed to do that worked well for us was to have one ATM card because we, we, we got burned a couple times, you know, both of us pulling out because he won his way, I won my way, and we had to learn how to do this thing together. And so, you know, we realized, you know what, until we get it together, let's have one ATM card. And so one week I would have to plan out how much money I needed during the week and he had the card and vice versa and the other thing that we did was we did not go to an ATM that uh, was not our bank so that we cut down on the additional fees so those Mm -hmm. were just two little things that we did you know and progress is progress you don't right. worry about That's perfection right. as yep. long as you are making those steps forward you know my family saved a lot of money by just us taking the initiative to plan things out and to make sure that we went to our uh atm the correct atm machine yeah and uh, listeners if you're just joining us remember family we are talking to direct mortgage brokers we have uh fy and eric in the building with Oh, Kurt, I'm sorry, Curtis in the building was saying, I, I got to say, who? I, I told you I was going to have to hear that name multiple times. My bad, Curtis. Oh. He got me. Now, how do you remember Afwa, not Curtis? Come on, man. Come I mean, because Afwa is just so unique, though. You know what I'm saying? Look, he, Charles said, he looked like a Curtis. I'm going to call him <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is. Kurt, like my man ain't talking. You better remember, close <laughs> mouth, don't get <laughs> <laughs> Afwa is a respected <laughs> professional in my eyes. There you so go. I'll let her lead the way. When, I, when, yeah, when it's my time, oh, I will speak. So she didn't train the husband and you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, what about training? No, 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 no. no she, she's just a respected professional. Yeah. So I, I, I stay in my Kurt. lane when it's time for me to speak. For but sure. now, you, you, but, uh, what I will say, Curtis <laughs> has looked up some different um, avenues in this area where folks can get yeah. closing costs and down payment. You were talking about some oh, yeah. rural? Um, even as far as uh, rural USDA loans, 100% financing. Uh, VA mm-hmm. loans, 100% financing for purchase. And there are grant programs available. And even for the investor who's looking to uh, uh, purchase there a lot of those programs that we used to have back in in the early 2000s where there's less documentation and less income uh, mm-hmm. required those a lot of those programs are back you know people just don't know about them because they're not out there mm. uh, and they're not spoken about a lot but there are a lot of investor programs um refinance rates are of course great if you're looking to pay off some of that christmas debt or hey. or looking to uh you know um add put additional on the household just uh leverage and, pay, and get your credit better yeah and you want to pay off some debt to to get your scores a little bit better uh, refinance is a great option at this point. Right. So, Curtis, here's something else for you. Uh, one one of the lessons that I that I've learned is the management of credit cards. Now, credit cards, like is I hear you talking about loans, mm-hmm. and essentially a credit card is a loan to some extent. Definitely. Um, and so that's something big with, with our people because it can go a long way in in helping you pay for stuff without putting you in deep debt if you know how it works if okay. you know how to manage it Definitely. so 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 i um, mean aaron you can jump in on this too but but i'm just curious like for our listeners for our audience like if, if, if there's anything at the top of y'all list like what where you can compare good debts to bad debts because i think that's something that we struggle with because a lot of times people think well you know it takes money to make money and all that kind of stuff but uh, but i think it's important to understand you know where there's there's some things where, where you got to be on the on a you know like a level playing field first before you jump into that to a loan with it well I, I think yeah. any good debt is going to be debt that you can pay mm. you know, if, okay. you, if you can I'll afford you. to pay it back then it's good debt you know I'll you don't you. the thing is don't get in debt that you can't afford to pay back because if you can't afford to pay it it's going to become a bad debt I so, must be the only ratchet one up in here oh my word <laughs> because y'all ain't talking about all this tax money that they getting ready to mess up here well, and that's what I'm saying you know if, like if I mean we need to money. we honestly need to as a whole create the infrastructure where we know how to manage this tax money because some people that make seven dollars an hour to get back ten thousand dollars could change their whole life if they position themselves correctly and use this money in the right way exactly that right. doesn't mean give it to your boyfriend so he can go get a package and tell you he gonna flip it here real quick <laughs> or we gonna go out here hey just raise hey just facts yeah, or go out here and we do not and, condone and, the oh, sale yeah. or <laughs> yeah yeah we ain't condoning now I'm just saying or going out here and trying to pick up two and three cars that we gonna do a little work to and flip them right. 
You know what I'm saying? In this short time frame. Like, we can't see the forest for the trees right. when it comes to money in the African-American community. Right. We know how to look rich while we're broke. But if we change the dynamic of the thought process, then we can create not only generational wealth, right. but we can position ourselves where other races and other people will say, you're worthy of me doing business with. That's you're right. making a great point because... Yeah. Of course I am. I'm a racist. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just playing. I was just playing. But you get yeah, that yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the rental property that they have the tax money that they can put the down payment on and they could buy something that's income bear, yeah. a, a bears an income. So you're right. You're 100% correct. And we, we should be thinking about that, but, you know, we can't... We can take take the horse to water. We can't have everyone drink that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but you make a great point, definitely. Yeah, another thing I wanted to make sure that the listeners understood, and, and Curtis, you can piggyback on this a little bit, is that so many times, even in general, people just think that you have to start with a lot mm. to purchase right, a property right. to start your real estate portfolio. And with the programs that are out there like VHDA and FHA and VA, I mean, I, I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, right. I know about five or six guys that and, and and ladies that in the last probably five to ten years have significant real estate portfolios, mm. but they started off by just buying that one little property that nobody told them they should buy. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the way to do it. That mm-hmm. that one little thing that man, you gonna live there, man? What you doing? Then all of a sudden they take that property, they refinance it, they purchase an investment property, yeah. they use that to start a business. Exactly. Now they have a multi million dollar. Co- so all these things, but the reason I'm mentioning that is that you gotta start with one. <laughs> yeah, but Aaron, you gotta right. start somewhere. Hey, so so let, let me chime in there though, because this might step on y'all toes a little bit. No, you let's know, break it down. I'm like being y'all profession, but there's a thing called house poor though. Oh, 120%. We can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That. You know, like, so, so, like, we're going to take a break. As soon as we get back, like, let's break that down a little bit. You know what I mean? Because sometimes there's so many ways where we can save money without just accepting whatever the bank gives us, right? So, oh, let's, 120%. Let's, let's, let's break down to our people, you know, what, what house poor may mean to you all, the professionals. So, yeah, so we have, um, we have, we have mortgage, uh, direct mortgage brokers here with us. It's Aaron, it's Charles, it's Razor. Stay tuned, y'all. 422 you In My Humble Opinion. With Maxilia Robinson and Charles Lewis. Only. On 101.3 Jams. I want to give you the opportunity, you know, to close out with any topics and uh, final words that you want to give. But where we left, we were talking about house poor, being house poor. Uh, because, you know, uh, like there was uh, one of our um, listeners and a friend of mine, you know, she was telling me stuff about, you know, what the bank and what the officers, you know, loan officers were saying she could qualify for. And so I had to remind her, okay, but you're working with that person at their place of employment. They have money to make as well. So, yes, you could qualify for it, but you should also have your personal finance advisor. Would you all agree with that? Yeah. Your finance advisor is looking out for your benefit. It doesn't you know, benefit either way. So I want to talk about what house poor means to you all. Well, I'm a, I'm, I am my client's personal financial advisor also. Okay. So, right. I, you know, there are guidelines restricting certain programs that don't allow you to become a house poor. And that's what those guidelines nice. are for. Good. Um, there are other programs for maybe an investor that, you know, you wouldn't have requirements such as debt to income to, based on the amount of money you have coming in versus the amount of money you have going out. But uh, most most programs uh, will have guidelines that protect you from that. So I protect my clients myself. Yeah, I 100%, 100% agree with Curtis. I think um, the most important thing and even having casual conversations with any client that walks through the door, one of the, the easiest things, and it's very cliche, is I say, what you make in a year is not what comes home in your bank account. Oh, no. mm-hmm. And so if you make 100, you need to realize you really make 65 to 70. Yeah. Right. Now, thinking about it that way changes the whole game. That's right. Now, on paper, you make 100. And the bank might qualify for you for that, but you got to know your own budget. And there's and there's a lot of good forms out there. I mean, the good thing, and these professionals would agree with me, the internet has so much information out there. You have Motley Fool, you have Nerdwall, so many things that can help you just create your own personal budget. Mm-hmm. And this is one thing I want to tell people: Amazon probably has a staff of accountants that count their monthly bills that they pay millions of dollars a year Mm -hmm. to make sure that their numbers are right. Mm. If Amazon can pay somebody millions of dollars a year to watch their money, why don't we? Right. But it's so hard to know that you qualify for $300,000 and you to walk away from that money on the table. Like, honestly. (laughs) 
Not if you got to get a house back to the bank in yeah, six yeah, months. But, <laughs> but, I mean, but we, we do it every year. As a personal financial advisor, I wouldn't allow you to if you... Absolutely. You know, I'm going to advise you on the best thing for you and your family, yeah. you and your household, because you have to live with that loan um, for the next 20, that's 30, right. 40 years. Yeah, see, so, so you're a good brother. Like, position. there's so many that's predatory out there, you know, like, but thank you for being a good one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of that stuff is gone, but you can mm-hmm. always find to have someone who's going to try to do it differently. Mm-hmm. But, of course, I mean, that, that goes back to morals and ethics and, you know, the type of person that you are so I definitely want to make sure that my clients are, are you know because they're going to see me they come to my office they talk to me they call me they have my personal cell phone number how can they reach y'all they can call me direct at 804-836-9580 or curtis.white at directmb.com Apple. Afwa Jones, board certified credit consultant. I always do free consultations. You can text me and say that you would like a free consultation and I will text you back and give you my calendarly where you can schedule it. My text number is 703-565-8823 and I'm able to help clients nationwide. 703-565-8823. Thank you again for the opportunity. Hey, I have a last question for you. Last question, if possible. Talk to us a little bit about the power of business credit, because I heard you talking about that a little bit. And so many times we discussed the consumer credit, but the business credit and helping you establish LLCs and things of that nature. Talk about how powerful that is and just give us a couple of little quick bullets about um, some of the strong points of having great, good business credit. Really quick, um, I do have an ebook, and I know that a razor is. Um, we're we're talking about how we can make that available to to listeners. So uh, I do have a DIY um, business credit ebook. So guys, stay tuned. There may be some great opportunities for you to get that. Um, but basically, in the ebook, I walk you through step by step how to set everything up. And ninety percent of everything that I show you are free resources that you can do. So pick out a name if you don't know a name. For me, I would do Afwa Jones LLC. Just get the EIN because you can always go back and change the name. Just get it done. You can get it done in 15 minutes. It's free. So set that up. Get that going. Uh, once you have your business entity and you've set you've set everything up, the next thing that you want to do, of course, you want to begin cleaning your credit because you want to separate your business credit from your personal credit. Then once you begin to separate it, and I actually show you how to get your DUNS number for free. The reason that you want to have a DUNS number is because you want to look at DUNS as kind of like the fourth credit bureau as it pertains to business credit. You want to have that DUNS set up because that DUNS is what's going to report your business credit and be careful reaching out to them because DUNS have, has a strong sales team that will make you think that you have to buy some things to get your DUNS number and you do not have to do that. Another reason why you want to set that DUNS up before you start applying for business credit is because once you do have your DUNS uh, number set up, you actually open yourself to get uh, approved at a much higher um, mm-hmm. credit limit than if you did not already have a DUNS number set up. So mm-hmm. there, again, there's a system to doing things. So you get that set up first. And then in the ebook, I actually show you several different um, uh, credit cards that you can a business credit cards that you can get instantly right away um, to so that you can start building and establishing your credit and so you do things your business credit and so for instance once I have my business credit set up now if I want to pay for advertising if I want to market stuff if I want to do a Facebook ad campaign anything that I want to do I can use that business credit card and preserve my my personal Mm -hmm. everybody's trying to do their business stuff with their personal money remember this if you remember nothing else use other people's money OPM oh, thank you thank Alpha you for just that. gave us like 10 million right. jewels in 5 minutes yeah, that's right so F1 and Curtis thank you so thank you. direct thank you. mortgage thank brokers we look forward to y'all joining us again on Absolutely. IMHO thank, you. thank y'all thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.